this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about thermal paste application for your CPU and getting the best coverage to ensure good thermal performance. I want to talk to you about things you might know and might not know and problems that you might have that you might not even realize exist. So I want to talk to you first about the standard installation of thermal paste and the traditional method, which is to put a pea-sized amount in the middle. Now, on modern CPUs, they're actually longer top to bottom than they were historically. Both Intel and AMD have adopted this rectangular design, which makes them a little bit lengthier. So that means that perhaps putting a pea-sized amount in the middle doesn't necessarily work like it used to. You can see me trying that here, for example, and showing you that with this NZXT Kraken cooler, putting it in the middle doesn't actually cover the entirety of the IHS. So that's the integrated heat spreader where the CPU's heat goes through that metal on top and is made to make contact with your cooler via the thermal compound. So ideally, what you really want to do is to get a good thermal coverage. So the thermal paste needs to be spread across the entirety of the CPU to ensure that the heat dissipates from the CPU into the cooler and then obviously gets dissipated and cooled down. So my actual preferred method of putting thermal paste on is to use a small spatula and just ensure that you're uncovering the entirety of the IHS now, you do need to make sure you've just got a thin amount. You don't want to slap on absolutely loads, but you don't really need to worry either because if you go over the edges, it's not a problem. It's not going to cause any issues or damage to the CPU. You can see that if you then seat your CPU cooler down over the top of that, you then get a much better coverage and you will get better thermal performance out of it. And I'll show you how to check whether you've got it right at the end of the video because there are ways that you can benchmark and test and then check to see that everything's running as it should be. You can see here that it's covered the entirety of the CPU and we should get better coverage. And many will tell me that's too much thermal paste, but it will still give you the performance that you need much better than not having enough. And that is my opinion on it, and I'll stick by that. What I want to also talk about, though, is other problems that you might have that you might not have thought of or could happen easily. So this is the Leonie Galahad Trinity cooler. And on that one, you're meant to spread your own thermal paste. There's also a sticker that you need to remove from the copper plate on the pump head. Now, you've probably seen videos telling you to take that off. Obviously, you need to remove that. I'm not going to tell you to do that. <laughs> as the tip here. The tip for this one came from a mistake I made while using the spreader. So this cooler actually comes with a special sticker that you're meant to apply after you've taken off the original protective sticker. So this sticker has holes in it and you're basically meant to align this onto the cooler, spread your thermal paste on top, and then it should give you the right amount of thermal coverage. But what you'll see here is I accidentally let a little tiny bit of the plastic sticker get stuck on the copper plate. I didn't actually realize until I was reviewing the footage the mistake I'd made and the potential problems that that could cause. So now I'm gonna to have to remove that cooler potentially and remove that tiny little sticker there. It's also hidden by the thermal paste, so it might not be obvious, but you can see now that there's a problem that wasn't even necessarily immediately seen. The other thing is, even with this logic of spreading this on, I actually found that it wasn't perfect coverage here. So I think it's worth checking. I've made a video in the past about mistakes to avoid with your cooler. And quite often, if a cooler is running too hot, it's usually because the thermal paste hasn't covered the entirety of the IHS or because you've not seated it properly. So you've not secured the thumb screws tight enough. And basically, there's no good contact between the two. Now, one way to check if you're a bit worried and you're not too sure is to use Cinebench R23 and then something like Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info. If you run Cinebench, which is a benchmarking tool, it'll put your CPU under pretty heavy load and then you can check the temperatures. You can see here Hardware Monitor giving us information on both the P cores and the E cores on this Intel processor and the max temperatures for them. And what I have noted is that the Pcore 4 and 5 are running a little bit hotter than the others. Now, this is not massively hotter. I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about this. But if you had a big discrepancy in the data, let's say most of the Pcores are 70 degrees, but a couple of them are 90, that could imply that one area of the CPU hasn't properly been covered with thermal paste and therefore it's not dissipating the heat as it probably should. So this is a quick and easy way to see if there's a problem. Obviously, you could also remove the pump head and just see if there's good coverage there. But this is one tip that you can do for free in Windows to run and see what's going on. Obviously, if there's one part of your CPU that's running hot, then the entirety is seen as running hot, according to the software. And Windows, 
and your system may well throttle your performance because of protecting the CPU from its max temperatures. So especially if you're reaching into the 90, 100 degree mark, then you get thermally throttled, and that's a big problem. A big problem that can easily be fixed. Hope you found these tips useful. Check out links in the description to more videos like this. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.